Okay, uh, welcome back to ET805 class. Uh, today we will talk about Bayesian knowledge tracing. Uh, before we start with the Bayesian knowledge tracing, the most of the today's class will be about the, um, the basics of Bayesian networks and base, base net. Then we will I will motivate you about Bayesian knowledge tracing. So, I expect you to go ahead and read about Bayesian knowledge tracing from papers. I will today I will motivate you about Bayesian knowledge tracing. I will not uh, go in detail about how to train the systems because that is not part of this class because that will involve more of uh, computer science uh, concepts to teach the sense how to train the system. So, today we will see about base, Bayesian network and motivation for the Bayesian knowledge tracing. Okay. Activities, individual activity first, uh, write down a base theorem. Think of it, what is a base theorem? You know, it is a conditional probability, it is it is about representing conditional probability. Okay, if you do not know base theorem, stop there, let us do the share activity. So, there is no no idea, no one knows base theorem. Okay. Now this is just to check whether you know a Bayesian theorem or not. So let's skip this slide, okay? You you have heard the Bayesian theorem, the probability, conditional property of A given B, B given A. That's the Bayesian theorem. How do you know? The, do you do you think about it? If you want to take time to think about it and let me know. I'm I'm okay. With it. Conditional probability of probability of A given B. In a basic Venn diagram, we used to have a two two parts, and we used to have intersection union. Then we used to have the conditional theorems A given B, B given A. Okay, okay. Don't search internet for the best best theorem now. Okay, that that will not serve the purpose. No, it will take time to understand uh, base theorem. You might see the formula in the internet, but um, if you know about it, if you look at the formula, if you understand something, if you want to discuss, discuss. Otherwise, don't read something in the internet now. Okay. So you want to discuss? No. Okay. No. If you have some something about base 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 theorem, then no. Yeah, you want to say something? Okay. Uh, what is base theorem? Before jumping into base theorem, I will teach you this basics. So I I was not expecting to jump join with the base theorem at all today's class. So don't worry. Uh, this is the basics for Bayes theorem. Okay, now uh, Bayes theorem actually it's about relating conditional probabilities. Okay, conditional probabilities of A given B or B given A. Okay, it is about relation between these conditional probabilities. What Bayes theorem? So, what is conditional probability? What is conditional probability? It's a probable. Sorry. of B yes. So, given how probable is one event given that other event occurred. Okay. Consider that two events uh, pass and study. If I study, I will pass. Okay. The two events. If a student studies, he will pass the exam. Okay. The two events. The two events are not independent. They are dependent which means if you study, you will pass. It is not a separate independent events. Can you tell me the example of two independent events. We taking class today and uh, accident happening in the in front of main gate. Is it dependent? No, it is totally independent. Okay, sorry, <laughs> no accidents I am saying. Raining outside in the main gate or something like that. Okay. <laughs> so, it is totally independent events. We are not talking about are independent. So, this pass and study are not independent, they are dependent. If you study, you will pass. Okay. So, uh, this dependency is shown between the inter intersection. You see that figure intersection of pass and study. So, there is some, some dependency. If there is no intersection, it is independent event. Okay. So, the event A is passing the exam and the event B is studying hard. Okay. If you study hard, I might get pass. Okay. I might pass. What is the probability that student passed an exam given that she studied for the exam. The probability that passing the exam given that she studied for exam that is probability of passing the exam P is passing the exam given that she studied for exam. 
it is actually probability of the intersection you see probability of P and S given complete probability. So, probability of intersection says that uh, there are like uh, out of say, say some numbers um, 20 percent of the 0.2 times it is student get pass and what is the probability of study like uh, she studied only 80, 80 percent chance or 70 percent chance that division has to go in. So, this is the conditional probability. So, are you clear about this? Do you have any doubts in this conditional probability? Right? Are you, are you clear on the conditional probability? Right? So, if I have a conditional probability, similar probability saying that what is the probability of a person would have studied if he passed the exam, given that he passed the exam, what is the probability that the person who have studied? Probability of S by P. How do you derive that? So, I do not know whether the, the student studied or not. I know that um, uh, I know that Raju passed the exam. I want to predict given that Raju passed the exam, what is the probability you would have studied? Probability of S by P. So, what is the formula? P by P probability of passing, right. Still, you have a common factor probability of S intersection P or A inter uh, P intersection S that is a common factor. Let us this let us take those two uh, formulas ok. Similarly, I was written do these two formulas and I am taking the common factor there like a probability of P intersection S I am just taking it it is not exactly equal ok or it is equal. I am taking this common and I am I am just copying these values here probability of uh, P uh, given S probability of S equal to probability of S given P probability of P given P. Now, I take uh, probability of P given S probability of passing I want to represent only using the conditional probabilities not using the intersection ok. That is called a Bayesian formula instead uh, I just replaced S into A and uh, P into B A by B that is a Bayesian theorem ok. Are we clear on this? We will do example ok, we will do example to understand I am just saying are we clear how this Bayesian theorem comes up. Now, we know what is Bayesian theorem right. So, this is very very basics of Bayesian network, belief network, uh, probabilistics in machine learning this is very important uh, theorem because this is what uh, hidden Markov model formed on, conditional random fields formed on. Uh, so, all the probabilistics machine learning algorithms are from this Bayesian theorem ok. Uh, Nay base. So, all these things are from this base, base theorem, it is a very important theorem. Uh, other things are uh, from the um, different fields and clustering, neural networks, uh, uh, sigmoid function, which we saw in last time, like sigmoid function, it is another important function in the machine learning. So, this is very basic, okay, very simple to understand, right. So, do you all understand base theorem now? Any doubt? Okay, this is base theorem. Okay, probability of A given B is equal to probability of B given A into probability of A divided by it's divided by a complete divided by. Okay, probability of B. If you even just divide by probability of A by B also works well, but it's a complete divided by. It's a product, so it will work, but complete divided by. Actually, it is probability of B by A divided by probability of B into probability of A should be like that, but both is good. Okay. Now, you know base theorem this activity it is a quiz individual do not talk to anyone individual ok. A couple has two children ok one of which is a boy ok you know the given is boy. What is the probability that the, they have two they, they have two boys both of them are boys. I want to predict the probability of both the kids are boys given that one of the kid is boy what is the probability. Just apply the base theorem. Okay, what is the probability that they have two boys? That is the predict probability of predicting both have a boy. Both kids are both okay. Both children are boys. Given one of them is boy, so that is probability of B by A or A by B is equal to probability of B by A. Probability of one of them is boy given both are boys how much what it is probability sorry mm -hmm. 
okay let us go back to the same question okay that is why this is the only place where you might have trouble probability of both are both are boys given one bo one kid is a boy now you want to reverse it probability of given both are boys given that both are boys what the probability of one one kid is boy one because both are boys so you will have one there is no 1.2 1. 1.1 by 2 oh, I was wrong previously okay this probability is one okay into probability of uh, so, what is the final answer? 1 by 2? 50. Others? It is wrong, 50 is wrong, okay. Hmm? Hmm, no, probability will not go beyond 1. 0. 0.25, okay. No. <laughs> now you know the answer. <laughs> now you are trying to understand, okay. Shall you go? Okay, this is the answer. Define two events. The event A is both children are boys. So, what is the probability that both are boys? No, no. Uh, Let us talk about what is the probability that both kids will be boys. Yeah, yeah, we are not considering anything. Probability of both kids are boys. Yeah. Yeah, girl, boy, boy, girl, boy, boy is 1 by 4, right? No, 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 I will come to that. See, probability of one of the children boy is 3 by 4. No, 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 no. Yeah. Should we consider that two cases? Yes. Okay, one is older, one is older, one is younger kid. Sorry? Okay, let us, uh, you want to write it? Okay, let us talk about two events. There, there are two events. Probability of, we want to predict probability of A. both kids are boys. So, uh, uh, both kids are boys is 1 by 4. Are we sure about it? Why 1 by 4? There are 4 combinations possible, 4 combinations, does not matter both boy boy girl girl, it is actually uh, first kid, second kid is a matter, okay. Uh, if you go to the roll a dice, go to roll a toss a coin, everything you have to consider as even headed, uh, all, all considered to be that, because there are 2 different events are entities, they are two persons, okay, not. So, so both kids are boys is 1 by 4. What we want to predict is probability of, uh, one, what is the probability of one of which is boy, okay. Yeah, one of, one of the kid is boy is 3 by 4, yeah, that is. Three by four. Now, the, the, what we want is probability of a given B, which is equal to probability of B by A. What is probability of B by A? What is probability of B by A? What is probability of B by A? B. 1. Probability of B by A is 1. Not, not you cannot divide A and B like that. It's not an independent event. Joint. So what is probability of B by A is given that both are boys. What is the probability of one is being a boy? Others one because both are boys. One is boy. There's no other other way. So probability of B by A is one always. In this particular case, right? So one, one into uh, probability of A is one by four. So it's basically one by four divided by um, three by four that is equal to 1 by 3. So, there is like a that is the that is that is the answer. We got it now. Okay, I, what, what about uh, let us do one more assignment. Go home and uh, solve one problem on base theorem. 
not should not be in the internet okay think about your own problem like um, uh, there are five five bags which has uh, different colors of balls and you are picking one random color the color should be red or blue or something like that okay think about the problem and uh, and try to solve it okay 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 it's both the same i just so are we, are we clear about bayes theorem how it is applied as example are we clear can you move to the bayesian network so everybody understood okay what is bayesian network uh, compact representation of joint probability distributions among set of random variables and their conditional dependencies okay no 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 need to write it down i just i just give you the slides soon okay don't worry so a compact representation of joint probability distributions among a set of random variables the set of random variables or set of random uh, entities or some concepts and the interaction between these events the compact representing the compact of this joint probability between these uh, events and the actions between the events is called a bayesian network it considers consists of two main main things one is directed acyclic graph the second one is conditional probability table it consists of two important factors okay uh, you understood bayesian network now got confused how many of you understood bayesian network so okay i just want to tell you this uh, the way of the way i teach or the way uh, departments want to teach is different than the way the other uh, professors would teach because they might cover a lot of things everything but what we cover is very less very very less the idea here is that you understand it why we cover less because we expect the students go go home and read more by understanding the motivation of what's happened in the class read more about the papers and understand that's it right so if i would have done that and i would have shown example directly without asking you what's happening what would have happened you might have listened to me uh, you might have uh, picked up something but i understood 20% of what is going on that will not work okay so what i expect from now is go back home and read the papers or read the, uh, the related work which i'm just citing in the website like in the slides try to understand with the motivation or with the basic knowledge you gained here okay that's a drawback of this particular method of teaching you might get understand the basics but you have to read more in other way you will you no need to read more in the um, in the home but you will not get much okay oh yeah <laughs> and uh, who's way and outpost way and outpost oh, yeah all comes today don't worry so that will be part of your exam may be see i'm going to teach the bayesian network and you might have done your assignment and we're going to ask a question on what's your learner model and how do you define with the example okay maybe okay let's think about this bayesian network i i after lunch you went to hostel okay i'm very bad at thinking because i thought when i was there like lot of students of here go to hostel nowadays most of students are not going to hostel they have got married and they stay outside at least here not all, all of you are going to hostel so consider i go to hostel after lunch i'll sleep i slept after lunch so 12:30 lunch i go at 12 12 o'clock it's a five lunch 12:35 i go and slept i missed the class okay they are all dip it's not independent events right this event is dependent yes or no right i can miss the class by something else also because i had a meeting with my supervisor at 145 so i have to miss the miss today's class it's also possible right there's other possible events okay what happens if i miss the class what i will ask to do consider suppose i'm asking you to go and watch the today's class in the um, video lecture which is recorded using cd today consider i'm saying that if you miss the class you have to go and watch the today's class in a cd recording okay uh, i gave the notes name yes m yes c v is that okay that m is meeting s for sleep sleeping c for class v for video 
okay just just notation do not take the notations I use okay when you look at the mathematical equation everything will be different because I am here using it to make sure everybody understands my main motive is like you know this okay in this network there is a direction okay it is not cyclic there is no possibility of cyc cyc like a loop or cyclic. So, it is called directed acyclic graph. Okay. Bayesian networks have one important property saying that all the events, all the, the, the random variables or the, the SM or all the nodes, we call it as a nodes and the connecting between two nodes is called Hulk. Right, so that's what I mentioned here. The arc, the conditional dependencies, and the random the nodes, the connection between these two is called arc. It's a basics in the graph theory, right? Nodes and arcs. Now, in the one particular thing in uh, Bayesian network is all the nodes are conditionally independent. Okay, it's called conditional independence. What is conditional independence? Let's look at it. Do you think? slept after lunch and had a meeting is dependent just two events I had a meeting today at 12 o'clock at 1 o'clock so I missed the class or I went to uh, I, I went to have lunch and I slept is these two events dependent how many say yes how many say no yes or no no right so you said no Umana said no, Navinit, no, Ashu, no two events, there is sleeping after lunch and I had a meeting with the supervisor, Lucian, no, okay. What if I know the value of, I missed the class, okay, given that I missed the class. Now, these two events are there is a connection either I would have slept after lunch or I would have had a meeting. They are not dependent directly right, but conditionally dependent because of they are connected to a some child node. If that child node has a value say yes uh, I missed the class today which means I would have either slept or I would have had a meeting with the supervisor. This is called conditional independence these two nodes are totally independent, but due to a condition these are connected. I will tell you one more example. Take the nodes sleeping after lunch and watching video lecture. Is these two nodes are dependent or independent? Dependent. If I sleep after lunch I miss the class I have to watch the video. Although it is not directly on, on hop it is one hop right. Uh, Lucian. So, dependent or independent? Looks independent. Dependent. There is a dependency, right? If I would, have I would have slept after lunch today, given that it is Tuesday, okay, it is not every day, right? Given it is Tuesday today, I'm, I would have slept after lunch, I have to watch a video in the CD. Dependence. Let me tell you. What if the missed the class value is 0? I did not miss the class today, still I slept after class, after lunch. Now, is this things are dependent or independent or I did not sleep after lunch, I missed the class, then there is a dependency. I did not sleep after lunch, I did not miss the class till my professor asked me to watch a video again. So, there is no, there's no dependency. So, what, what I mean is this is called conditional independence. Okay. Each and every node here is kind of independent, but given a condition. If there is one condition, we can ignore the parent nodes. Given the child node condition, we can ignore the other nodes. You don't need to consider all the condition dependencies in the network. Okay. So, uh, are we clear about conditional independence? This, 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 these terms are very, very important in a Bayesian network. Yeah. Conditionally independent. Yeah. Independent. 
okay, I am going to back to same. Uh, okay, what I was talking is exactly here. Uh, so directed a cyclic graph. It's like a static directions. Uh, directions are static. It's not going to change. It's a fixed. And uh, cycles are not followed. That's why called a cyclic graph. And the two nodes, conditional node S and V, are independent. But if the value of C is known, they will become independent. Because S and V are. S and V are like sleeping after lunch and watching videos like a dependent, but if you know the value of C, it is now more dependent. If value of C is uh, 0, it is no need of dependence because you attended a class, then it does not matter. S and M are independent, but if you know the value of C, they will be dependent, right. So, it is called conditional independence. So, wh wh why we call it as a conditional independency? It is because when you want to consider the suppose in a network when you are in the node V, we do not need to consider the all the conditions of the S or M or something. If you know the value of C, you can ignore the other, other two things. That is called independent given the condition in between. That is called conditionally independence. Are we clear at this point? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay. Let me show. So, so, so I'm sleeping in the after lunch and having meetings. Totally independent events. They are not dependent. I can sleep one day. I can have meeting one day. Suppose I miss the class today. Given I miss the class, it should be because of only two possibilities. One is either I have slept, or I would have had a meeting. Now, I need to know if I would have slept, slept after having sleeping daily after lunch is say 0 0.7, having meeting 0.3, I need to consider these two factors to predict what will be the reason. Because each one has some its own probability, right. We need to predict what is the probability of uh, why the student missed the class. Is it because of he slept or is it because he had a meeting? If it is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 probability. Given last 10 times, 5 classes you missed because of his step, 5 classes you missed because of you had a meeting. Now, I need to consider both this. These are two totally independent activities. I am considering both now. It is called, it becomes dependent because of condition. Okay, that is the doubt I think Ashu has because it is conditionally dependent. Okay, the word is conditional independence just to say that all these nodes can be dependent independent based on a condition. There is some condition, connected condition, that is what the idea is. So, you understood the point now? Okay. Okay, what is conditional probability table? It is very interesting here. Okay. Assume the values of each nodes are Boolean. Oh, I gave the answer. I the thought of asking question here. Okay, assume the values of nodes are Boolean, yes or no. Okay, Boolean values, yes or no. I would have slept, yes or no. At a meeting, yes or no, only Boolean, which means 0 or 1. I just want to make it simple here, okay. Because if it uh, like uh, throwing a dice is giving a 6 values or something like that, it is a Boolean. How many probability values required to represent node S? Yes? No, probability of S yes given S, yes, uh, probability of S yes given no. So, how many probabilities? So, I just need a only one probability saying that probability of sleeping after lunch, only one, one value I need. If it is probability of sleeping after lunch is 0 0.8, yes uh, is 80, 80 per time occurred and no is 0 0.2 time occurred because sleep it is opposite. So, I just need a one value to represent the opposite yes or no. Are we clear on this point? It is very see this is this is a I am just going step by step so that you understand the Bayesian network in complete. Okay, are we clear on this? So, for node C, consider node C, how many probability values required to represent? Probability of C given S and M. How many probability values required to represent this? Oh, I was, okay, the fancy is 4, the because of combination of S and M saying that probability of yes is, uh, so consider the, the four values like yes, m, yes, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, something like that, the four combinations needed in order to understand the probability of C, this is a table. So, now you need to have the probability of C given yes, not m, probability of C given not yes, only m, probability of given yes, uh, not yes, not m, probability of given both. 
there are four possible values right you need a four different probabilities okay this, this is a this is another combination like binary combination like the, the, I just gave a value two two so that is we are making it easier only boolean. So, now we need a table in the node called probability of C the table you have to have the four values. So, we need to from the data you need to learn this values and read it and repeat it there. that is called probability condition conditional probability table. For a node V how many values we need? No? Two tell me what are the two probability of V given C V given not C just two values do you understood or not? Okay, the answer is simple. If there is no parent, it is 1. If there is two, 1 parent, it should be 2. If there are 2 parents, it is 2 power 2 4. If there are 3 parents, 2 power 3 8. Okay, C had a 2 parents, S and M are parents for C. V has only 1 parent. Okay, since it is binary, I am just putting 2. If it is 3 value, it is 3 power 1, 3 power 2, 3 power 3. Got, you got it? No, no, the, if the C has two parents S and M, right? So it will have a two, two power two, four values because uh, probability of C given only S, probability of C given only M, probability of given not none of these, probability of C given both of these, all, all values should you should know so that you will have some answer. So, so you, you should know a table saying that probability of C, uh, probability of C equal to 0.8 given S is 0, uh, M is nothing, no M. So, should be saying that only C occurring without this will be saying that uh, okay 80 percent occurs something you have to have know the value from the data. So, you, you, you understood this part well, you understood okay what is your doubt exactly I am just I can go on hmm. yeah 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 one parent yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does not matter that is why that is why the base that is why ah, exactly now you have got it that is why the condition independence in a normal I should have considered all the three nodes all the other nodes if I want to represent a graph of four nodes with all the connections imagine it is not a Bayesian graph if not the DAG graph it is just a four nodes I need to have a probability of everyone will have a probability of all, all other three so 888 8, 8 will be there. Right, luckily Bayesian graph we are avoiding it by having a condition independence. Right, that's why that is the that's the advantage of having Bayesian. Okay, I'm, I'll go to that point actually later. Uh, so we are we are making a statement saying that it's all called all the nodes are conditionally independent. No, it is independent always or conditionally independent. Hey, this is very simple graph. Imagine a graph of say 50 nodes and going on multiple steps, then you will have a problem. Should I consider first graph to the you know you no need to consider the previous condition is enough to think whether you need it or not or something like that. Okay. Uh, if you know the value of C. If the C value is 1, we do not need to see S and M because C happened. So they, no, we, we, you should know. See, you will know all the probability of um, probability value of C and all this thing. Suppose C is the one thing you are observing. Consider C is the one thing you are observing. If the student come to class, we know they did not he didn't sleep or he did not have a meeting, he came to class. So, you do not consider probability of S and M directly now. Now, we are asking predicting probability of watching video given probability of C, C equal to 1, 0. You will not watch a video if probability of C is given equal to 1. He attended the class, why will watch a video? Okay. Now, I am not even considering the S and M there. That is why based on the conditional value, the probability of the C, you will know whether you need the above 1 or not or something. Um, Entering is uh, see the parent have a uh, child. This is lines entering. Exiting is the child. How many exit childs here? The parent. So the C has a two parents. The two lines entering. Only one child on it. That. Our parents and the one exiting are childs. Yeah, yeah. So there's no parent for them. Only one child for them. 
So, in a graph right there is a parent child parent concept if you have a big uh, graph you can like say that oh, who are the parents who are the childs actually ok. So, condition probability as one particular equation this is the equation is saying that uh, probability of any x 1 x 2 x 3 this are the variables uh, x 1 x 2 are variables saying that uh, S M C it is basically probability of uh, the current x 1 or x 2 uh, given the parents parents uh, probability values like probability of S or M or something like that. So, if you want to say the conditional probability of, I want to say the probability of all the variables x 1 S M you have to product of it product of all the probabilities probability of S probability of M probability of C V probability of C will include probability of C divided by parents probability saying that uh, probability of S and M given S and M that is why the, the, the equation says you understood the equation is clear ok. Actually Herald gave the answer bit I just wanted to talk but uh, think of it a compact representation of joint probability distributions. Okay. Now, you understand the, the definition right a joint probability I want to represent this joint probability joint probability of the B, C, S, S, M all this thing of a random variable random variables yes sleeping having a meeting going for class and the conditional dependencies in a directed acyclic graph with the conditional probability table is called Bayesian network. Why the Bayesian network is compact? Take 2 minutes share in individual activity ok. Why do you think the word compact came in? Do you understand, do you understand all other words by the way? I, I hope I made sure all other words were covered in the topic right. Ok, what why this uh, Bayesian network is compact representation? Why not uh, some other network is a compact? So, by, by, uh, by this you might understand that you can represent the same thing we are seeing today in a different ways of networks not just a Bayesian directed graph there may be a different combination Markovian process you can represent there are a lot of possible ways to represent, but today we are seeing about Bayesian network representation ok that is it. So, do not consider it is only the Bayesian network we can represent ok tell me the answer. Actually Herald gave that answer to me you get you almost got the answer. Tell me answer actually why it is called compact. Ok, it is kind of like say um, theoretically yeah what you are saying is exactly the answer, but I was trying to go in detail depth, uh, but yeah you are right because the, the this particular representation does not need to consider all the nodes when I want to calculate everything. So, it is called it is a compact representation right any other answer. Any other idea? Ok do not do not go do not go <laughs> you are good till now ok do not do not uh, go <laughs> ok. Uh, I said that the values are Boolean ok. Consider the Boolean values. Consider the network is not Bayesian network. There are 4 random variables with the Boolean value yes or no, yes or no, yes or no ok. Uh, oh. No, I was thinking about other node actually. Initially I started as a 5 node. So, ok there are 4 nodes ok. So, you will have to store the value of 2 power 4 values to represent the fully connected network. In fact, 2 power 4 minus 1 fully connected network in the sense S connected to M, S connected to C, S connected to V like all others connected to. So, we know to connect all these connections. What is S given M? What is S given C? S given V? All these connection networks you need to store how many connections will be there? 2 power 4 connections will be there almost of 2 power 4, 4, 4, 4 minus 1 15 connections will be there. Do you get what I am saying there? If I want to connect S to M, S to C, S to V separately and all each node every node is connected to everyone there will be 15 this kind of connection required right. 
but in this particular thing how many nodes we took uh, we need we had a only one probability values uh, for uh, s one for m four for c uh, two for uh, v so if you add it's all only 18 8 so it's it's a compact representation you no need to store much detail in it so if you imagine if you go to the bigger network say 10 nodes or 15 nodes if you have a pro problem like a proper network arranged you will save too much power uh, it is a compact representation to store data also it is easy to search the algorithm so that is called it is compact representation of the odd uh, variable random random variables and their conditional representation between these variables. So, now we understood what is a compact representation of joint probability over, over all the variables in the network that is called Bayesian network. Are we clear Bayesian networks today? Bayes theorem today? Are we clear on both? Okay. Has this anybody looked at it? Okay, whatever we are talking till now is actually used in the educational setup. There is a node called concept. Each concept is connected to two explanations, uh, explanation A, explanation, ex explanation B and uh, the student understood the concept or not is what we want to predict. Uh, we can predict by only two, uh, two observable variables by answer 1 or answer 2. If a, if a student give answer 1, then probability of given answer 1, given a concept. Uh, Okay, probability of given a, a 1 given what is the probability that the student would have understood that uh, concept is some value. If you gave answer 2 then say oh, what is the probability the student would have understood the concept is some other value. Now, we do not have that value we have a probability of a 1 by c, but we know how to identify probability of c given a 1 because we know the base theorem right. If you if you know the probability of a 1 given c we know how to identify probability of c given a 1 because we know the base theorem right. So, here there is a two uh, like a, this network shows a simple Bayesian network with the complete uh, conditional probability table also with it ok. Is network clear? Do not uh, try to understand what is the values 0 0.5, 0 0.7 it does not matter. Those values are from the um, um, observing say 100 students data for over the period of time they calculated that probability value. They counted the frequency of time and occurred okay. That value is just to show that is that is the value do not understand the try to understand the value. Now, you understood how the Bayesian net uh, simple Bayesian net of looks like that ok. Uh, this particular network is used in Wayang outpost where who did Wayang outpost ok. We are so, in the Wang outpost they try to predict the students attitude towards the system by using this particular uh, static Bayesian networks. Now, I use the word called static in the sense the nodes, the hog all these values are static it is not going to change at every time instance. It might change after you conduct experiment you go and uh, run the data again you might change it, but it is not changing at every instance. So, static the connections towards each thing is static. So, time spent per problem, time spent per action, average incurrent action to model students attitude all are used to measure the students attitude in the Wayang outpost ok. In the previous example the example which we saw right now which node we can update at every time instance based on students response. If I want to change that static network into a dynamic I am just asking you there is a static network let us see go back the static network. I want to update at every instance based on the student's answer I want to update one particular node. I do not want to keep that value probability of that particular node. Which node you think we can okay, update? How many C? Okay, two. How many A1, A2? ok you see ok
Why C? Yeah, of course, I will ask that. <laughs> you can A, B, C, E, <laughs> I want to ask why C. <laughs> okay, you want to want the figure? Does the student understand the concept or not? Every time the answer might change, but based on the answer, we can update the concept. Or not. That probability can keep changing based on the student's answering. Considering the explanation A and B given, answer given, we can update it. So now we are updating the student understood the concept or not. Consider this is a representation of measuring the student understanding of concept. Now we can change C. Okay. Any doubt? Now. Exactly that is what happening. Now, the concept is A1 given B because this is a child, it is not dependent, but we need to measure the probability of because only what we observe is we do not know whether student understand the concept or not, it is happening in his mind. Only thing we can observe is what answer student gave. Student give A1 or A2. Given a A1, A2, now we need to predict probability of C, probability of C given A1 or A2, even though the direction is static and unique, we can do it because we know Bayes theorem. Probability of C given A1 equal to probability of A1 given C, that is the value that we have. Probability of C divided by probability of A1. You see what I am trying to say? You can predict that way because we know the Bayes theorem, that is why I, I introduced the Bayes theorem to you first, right. Because in a Bayesian network, you will not have all the values, only the observable values you observe, then you need to keep updating these values. You may, sometimes you need to update the parents. Okay. The note concept indicates students and the concept not, hence we can update the conditional probability table of concept based on students' response. Okay. If you can update the C, you can update the explanation value, everything can update it. So, updating the conditional probability table of Bayesian network is called dynamic Bayesian network. Okay. In that example, you are just updating one node. Okay. Suppose the multiple nodes or whatever, it is called dynamic Bayesian network. The network is not a static. Wayang outpost and distributor uses a static Bayesian networks. Now, we want to see the dynamic Bayesian networks in this particular thing that is called Bayesian knowledge tracing. So, we want to update a node called concept to indicate whether the student learned a skill or not. In that particular thing, I want to update it based on some answer. If we have a node for student's response, uh, forgot the previous example, consider a new example. If we have only one node for student response and the student response is Boolean value. Okay. There is a concept for each concept, there is a question asked. There is a response to the question. The question is yes or no, you answered correctly or not correctly, 1 or 0. Imagine this is a condition, there is a concept. The concept might be connected to some other things like uh, explanation, something like and the concept is connected. We are asking one question to the concept, the student answers yes or no. Given this condition, update the concept given the response. Okay. Probability of a concept given response will increase if the response is equal to 1. If we, the student answers are answered correctly, which means we think the student would have understood the concept, right? Are we clear or not? Okay, you, you want me to go a bit, uh, let me show you this. Mm. Okay, so so what is C? What is C? Someone say what is C? Concept to understand whether the student understood the concept or not. The response or is a response to a question connected to this particular concept. There are two values for response. It can be correct or not correct. If the student answer is correct, the probability of student understanding concept will increase or decrease. Hmm? 
if the student answers the question correctly, what is the probability the student understand the concept? Increases. If the student answers wrongly, we will consider student is not understanding the concept. Am I right? Okay. So, if you are with me, then I am going to ask the question, that is the idea. Okay. Think individually, there is a drawback, this method is not so perfect method, there is a drawback in it. Think individually and write one drawback, only one drawback of above method to update the student skill learn concept. Consider there is one concept, there is only one response, I am just simply updating based on the response of the uh, student given. If it is 1, I am updating, if it is 0, I am just missing it. Think carefully, take a minute or take 2 minutes, it is not always correct or why it is not correct, there is a chance that something goes wrong, think about it. Okay, I will give a clue. Okay. Um, do not point anyone. Okay, Raju is in the class. Okay. Raju never attends the class. He was, he comes here and he, 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 he never reads or something like that. Um, he comes to the class, then he, um, I give an exam, uh, like a only yes or no type question, like he just says yes or no, true or false type of questions. Uh, he answered all the questions, uh, he answered 60 marks out of 100 mark. Raju never attended a class. How did you, how, if I consider that guy would have understood the concept, I went 0.6 to the Raju understood the concept. Am I right? Why? Uh, that is why I want to discuss. Okay, so, so what is, what is there? I just want to know, I just expecting a word from it. Raju would have By chance, okay, that is called guess. Raju would have guessed the answer, he is not understanding the concept. Okay. This other student, Rahu, <laughs> okay. this other student, Rakesh, very sincere guy, attends all the class and um, he is very, very sincere guy and um, I know that you would have cleared all 100 marks, but he gave only 90, he did not do the 10 marks. What would have happened? Yep. Yeah, by mistake, you might have selected a wrong answer. Or in a mathematics view, when you solve the exam, you know the whole concept, just small. Um, point or something missed or the, the value of positive or negative sign missed, everything goes off, the mark, whole mark is 0, right, just because of you missed that, right, yeah, silly mistake. So, it does not mean the student did not understand the concept, it is called slip, anything else. So, the method we were showing previously that just updating the probability of concept given only the correct response or not may not consider the guess and slip. Okay. Student might give a correct answer by guess, so we need to avoid that. What is the probability of guess? So, guessing is also matters, right? We want to avoid the probability of guessing. And student might have understood the concept but answered wrongly by mistake, it is called slip. So, we need to have the probability of slip, there are two values, probability of slip, probability of guess. So, let us introduce a Bayesian knowledge tracing, a proper one, it has a four different probabilities. I think today's class is too much of probabilities, uh, but go ahead and go home and read the slides again, you will understand base theorem is something, base network is something, why I connected these two, just because in order to create a base Bayesian network, you need to understand the base theorem. Then why I am going to Bayesian knowledge testing? Because this is dynamic of it. I just want you to understand all the three steps. Go ahead and uh, look at it today, home, okay. So, probability of elbow is the initial learning, L0, not O, okay. It is L0. Uh, L0 is the uh, state before first state. L1 is the first time instance. L2, L3, the current time instance is LT. 
consider in a time instance every time is like L 1 L 2 each event or each action is L 1 L 2 L 3. So, the initial probability is some value the student might know of the prior knowledge, he might have some knowledge before coming into system. And P t is the accusation the probability a rule will make the transition from unlearned state to learn. So, this is the important probability which says a student I am considering the student not learn the concept, I am moving the student from not learn the concept to learn the concept there should be some transition between these two that probability is the P t. So, if I, I have to calculate every time what is the transition probability if the student would have moved from not knowing the concept to knowing the concept ok, which means based on the student's previous answer I thought the student would not know the an concept current answer is correct. Suppose the answer is correct, given the probability of guess, given the probability of slip, and also considering if it is correct, what is the transition from unlearning to learning would have happened? That transition probability you have to com compute it in order to measure the student is learning or not. So, probability of guess I told you about, probability of slip I told you about, ok. We have to consider four different probabilities in the Bayesian knowledge tracing. So, the initial probability probability of um, prior knowledge is simply the prior knowledge is um, it is based on the uh, probability of uh, the student would have known it. This value you have to compute from the student's pre test or something ok. This is not known to system you have to compute manually or something. How do you measure the probability of learning if the response to the question is correct? No think pressure activity just a think activity 2 minutes. Now, considering the probability of um, guess, slip, other thing, how do you measure the probability of learning? Previously, it is just simply the answer is right or wrong. Now, I, can, I want you to consider the probability of learning if the answer is correct. How do you think? Suppose the answer is correct, how do you measure the probability of correct? Considering the probability of guess and the probability of slip. Just give a try, it is not easy. I am asking you the Bayesian or tracing directly the step, it is not easy. Just give a try, maybe adding something like that. Any idea? Yeah, yeah probably prior knowledge is always needed, ok. Plus something, the correct answer is so, suppose consider the student is answering a fourth question the fourth question to a concept is correct. What is the probability of the L 4, the fourth instance is fourth instant L 4, the fourth instant probability of L 0 is prior knowledge, L 1 is from prior knowledge, L 2, L 3, L 4 is the fourth answer. I just want to know probability of L 4 given the answer, the answer is correct. I want to see if it is previously it is simply add with the prior knowledge with the probability of answer is correct has some value because that is what we did in last sum. I want you to consider the guess and slip. Is that possibly that what is the way to do it? Ok, um, let me give the answer for this one, you have to consider for next one ok. Uh, it looks big, tough right ok, it is easy I will tell you. If the answer is correct, if the answer is correct which means the student is based on students learning and it is not a slip consider the student know the concept he did not slip it there is no silly mistake he did ok. So, probability of answer correct is he learned it, but there is no slip that he not never did the silly mistake that is a probability of learning at the previous uh, answer probability of previous learning state it should be L 0 if it is a L 1 if it is L 4 it is L 3 into probability of not slip is not slipping which means is not he did not make the silly mistake that is why the answer is correct given what is the all probability the answer could have been uh, correct. Uh, the answer could have been correct is probability of correct answer the given the slip is not correct also probability of it does not know the it does not know the answer, but you would have guessed it right. There are two chances one is you would have answered it without making silly mistake plus he has no idea of a concept, but he had a good guess probability ok. So, you have to divide both 
So, now see probability is like given uh, out of 100 instance how many instance you are picking it correct 40 instance right. So, you need to say the probability of getting the correct answer without making any silly mistake divided by without making silly mistake also not guessing. So, you have to say by guessing good or answer the answer right. So, probability of guess. So, this is the probability of updating the state t if the answer is correct ok. Now, I want you to guess. Now, you can write it down this equation if you want. The next question is I want to tell you the question before. I want you to predict not so, so like this, but what is the probability of L t plus 1 if the observation is incorrect? The observation is incorrect, not correct. Okay. Write it down and tell me, then I will go to Nestle. Yeah, let me know the answer. So, probability of L at the current state um, L 4 something like that uh, given um, given uh, the observation that is the answer to this incorrect is equal to what? Incorrect means is answer wrong, you answer 0. So, that is probability of something, what is that? L may be of course, L at uh, previous state because we need to consider previous learning into what? How do you have? Slip. Slip. Okay. I am just, I am just going to do it. Okay. So, so you are saying that the answer is incorrect, it is because the student has made a slipped. Okay. Divided by? Divided by the probability of answering wrong. What are the chances of probability of answering wrong? Yeah, tell me what is that? So, that is again probability of see whatever in the top of of course, it includes because it should include because that is the first thing you already identified. That is the one way the student can go wrong is probability of L3 into he slipped, he slipped it plus, plus what exactly. Yeah. He slipped, he slipped in the sense because he answered. So, what is the other way? Yeah. Wrong guess. Wrong guess. <laughs> guess is not wrong. Okay, by the way, one more thing. Um, you cannot unlearn to learn, you can go into patient knowledge tracing, but from learning you cannot go unlearn, which means you cannot forget the concept you learned. That is not later, but I am just saying, yeah, you have to understand that part also. There is no wrong guess. There is no 1 minus probability of G, okay. What is that? Well, what is the way a student can answer wrong? One is he knows the concept, but he did not understand the uh, he did not understand, right? He did not understand is 1 minus probability, 1 minus probability of t into that is it into okay. Okay, let us see. Any other answer? That is not correct, by the way. Do not do it. There is something is missing. That is it. You are almost correct, but any, any other? No, you, you, but you are right. You are going in the path. It is not, uh, not that completely correct. Do you see, we need to understand why you may be correct given both why may be wrong both you have to consider in the previous one why is correct is what considered in this case why may be wrong the wrong possibilities okay. Okay, I am going to go for next slide because most of you said that um, who said that guess wrong guess okay, it is not wrong guess instead it is the probability of not guessing you do not know and you did not guess it also. So, you are right see the answer you gave is exactly correct you said no guess no guess means 
1 minus the probability of not guessing. Are we, are we, are we is everybody with me like this till now? Did you understand? Did you understand this part actually this is important part. Okay, I will do the updating skill mystery uh, this thing, but I am going to do this now. I am going to show this to you all, so that um, you can understand how uh, people are crazy about this patient knowledge tracing. Uh, there are people um, took this as a challenge, we present three prototype experiments for conferring useful information about BKT to our end users, teachers and students. The one is this kind of interactive thing, second one is, um, second one is again the interactive simulation and third one is you can take a road trip, what are the probability of guessing and slipping up and so someone was doing that. So, I am going to start this one, um, you, I, I wish, uh, I want everyone to go and today just play this one. Um, so, there are three things getting cook correct ingredients and prepare recipe correctly and serve the food, that cooking as a three parts. So, is the ingredient that part of a recipe something like that, so learned or not learned, it is, so the, there is a explain effort what is guess, there is explanation about what is pre learned you already uh, you already got a uh, degree already you knows how to cook it does not matter or uh, unusual sleep we prepared everything but then it fell down so is a master in the skill but still it slipped so you, you can see the four different uh, learning is, is taking time actually learning then um, can we add all these things and do it no we cannot add all these things like that we need to have a proper formula that is called Bayesian knowledge tracing comes in. So, I was asking right, uh, I have given all this thing, uh, are you adding it or something? So, no we are not adding something, we need to understand given the probability of, um, so not slipped versus guest not learned that is the four things you have to understand that is exactly which we saw in the equation. So, someone took the paper and really took time to uh, do that, that is the idea and the observation is the last thing, that is it. So, also there is an example, a student answered, then it went up. So, I want you all to go and just look at this, how these guys did and the, the interesting thing is they, they were like um, uh, BKTs across something for till 2018 is still using people, this is 95, 1995, okay. this created in 1995 BKT, but still people are using it in 2008. And these guys are going to explain this in 2017 and uh, they are going to use this particular thing in 2019, even this year, they are, they are planning to use this particular, uh, they are planning to use this uh, in uh, some of the conference workshop or something, there is a competition saying that how can you visualize the machine learning theorem and they are trying to use this as some one of the machine learning or AI theorem to show it off. So, yeah, so it is it's part of, still part of. Uh, um, what to say, uh, it is still a hot topic in education data domain, but it has a lot of drawbacks that we will discuss next class. Okay. I am going to remove the couple, some of the slides from that, then I am going to update it. Okay. Uh, that might take time. So, here is the multi point, um, please give a couple of, I know Bayesian knowledge tracing might be a toughest part in the multi point, we will see it again. Okay. Um, is there anything else just write it down there.